tell us. Is there bad blood between you two, like there is, there is against Purdue, or is it, like you said, it is a mostly unknown rivalry on campus and around Indiana? Um, so uh, is there bad blood between you two? Uh, I wouldn't say it's bad blood. I mean, uh, they're one of the better defenses uh, really in the Big Ten and around the country. And with our offense and the things that we do, this is a good challenge. You know, you're putting two of the best units against each other that, uh, that's, that's been around for a while. So. I wouldn't really call it bad blood. It's, it's, it's always a great game. We always play hard against each other just, just because of those two units. Well, Ralston, what, um, what do you notice about you know, Chris Covington as a practice? And kind of, how did you come along all the way to the preseason? I don't think probably any of us or maybe even himself didn't you know, expect to be in this situation when, when he was recruited when he arrived on campus. Oh, well, Chris has really embraced the, uh, the challenge. Um, he, he works really hard. Um, he, one of the more harder working guys I noticed throughout the summer. Um, I always told him was, you know, just keep coming no matter where you play that he was one of the guys I've, I've always took notice again. So I'm really confident in Chris moving forward. Uh, I just know he's going to do what he has to do to be in a position to help us win. He was put in kind of an awkward situation. I would, it seems inevitably with like if you practice in the first team of the week, gets all those reps, could be, could be better prepared than just kind of be you know, thrust into the situation like he was in Iowa. Um, well, I, I wouldn't really say he was just uh, thrown in there. I mean, because uh, some drills he does get to come in and work with the one unit. But uh, I, I just just know him. I know I know he'll be really, really prepared. And like I said, I'm, I'm very confident in Chris. Like, I just like I like the way he works. Are you guys moving forward with him as your starter? Is that the, is that what you guys have been told? I mean, I, I really don't know the details. I mean, I don't really know who's going to be back there. My job is to block for whoever's back there and, and get my job done. So, I mean, whoever they put back in there, whether – whether it be Chris, whether it be Diamond, I'm, I'm confident in whoever they put back in. That could be kind of a lot of, uh, oh, I don't know, pressure, responsibility on, on the whole line. Because, I mean, it seems like, that, at least initially, they may crowd the line of scrimmage if, uh, if Chris is back there and kind of almost daring you guys to pass. Oh, uh, well, I mean, we're, uh, our line, we're a veteran group, and we realize that, you know, like, a lot is going to be put on our shoulders, but I mean, that's what you want as a veteran group of guys that have been around with each other for a while. I mean, that's what you look forward to. That's our job. That's what we came in to do. So I really wouldn't think of it as any pressure. I just think of it as us just doing our job. Does it help that you guys have had, you know, experience working with that kind of read option offense with Trey the last couple of years? Does it help, you know, move into that kind of quarterback situation moving forward? Does it help just having that background? Oh well, like even even with uh, the, like the situation we had last year, we, we tend to switch our quarterbacks in and out a lot throughout practice anyway. So it's it's been something that we've, we've been used to hearing a hearing a different voice back there. And pretty much the same quarterbacks they practice and they they're on the same cadences and they time each other up pretty much the same. So it's really not that big of an adjustment as many people may think it is. Chris obviously has.